Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> Live to tape from TiVo Mike Solutions, it's the TiVo Mike Show. Sin's dumb, grace is king, and die into self has so replaced YOLO, it ain't even funny. I'm your host, Michael TiVo Mike Jefferson. And I'm entertainment guru, Mike Warner. Thank you for joining us, Saints. We're so glad you're here. It's Tuesday, and it's time for us to really remind you that this is us talking about the show. Yeah. Here's the thing, people. Here's the flipping thing from last Tuesday that you have to understand about the show on NBC. It's full of rich people. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little distracted at first, realizing that Kevin, who's boozing himself into oblivion, is making forty five thousand per week. And I said, That's pretty convincing. I think I could do that for forty five grand a week. But here's what's going on, people the bottom line to this show, why it's grabbing our hearts, mm. why we can't not watch it live. Yes. Yes. Was, was trying to figure out ways to say I can't make it to study this tonight. Yes. God understands. <laughs> it's because it's real emotions. Yes. That from week to week, you switch who you are. Yes. And that's what makes this show wonderful. And in last week's episode, the 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 issue that I saw came out biblically were two: one, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, mm. and in one person's case, his heart's not full, so he ain't speaking, and when he does speak to himself, so that's called dumb. Then, because no one can hear you except the camera guy, and he's not allowed to help because he has to be there to tape it. Um, <laughs> that would just be weird all of a sudden. Like, oh, here, buddy. You know, here's the necklace. It's all right. Um, we have another one in the prop room. Uh, so, uh, Milo, can you have another one? <laughs> uh, and part two. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. You have to laugh to keep from crying. That's what I'm doing. The show is so. You, you always, always, always have to forgive yourself. Yes. When you oh. hold on to unforgiveness, it proves, as my cousin Shababa Kwee has said, you have stopped forgiving. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And you can't do that. Even if it's just yourself. Right. And it's harder for yourself. Because you're harder on yourself. And that's the thing. So, so well, why is he mad at himself? Because he's with that. me? Come on now. Well, no, and that's the thing. It's because he never... Mm. Forgave the circumstance in which he lost his dad, but I'm seeing so before Even earlier. He, that's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. seeing this now. He never had his dad. Nope. And and at first, remember, remember we that we couldn't figure out the why him and Randall didn't get along. Right. Well, they could black and white. Well, no. Ebony I mean, I and Ivory. <laughs> no, but I go back to the pool. No, no. But that's what I'm saying. That's the thing. Oh, but the thing is, if you, the thing you're missing, or the thing that they see, so I'm a. Psychologist at heart, right? There you go. Go ahead, brother. And the thing that you don't see there, even from that pool scene, right, is unintentionally Randall is always stealing the the light. The oh, spotlight. you saw that from the pool. He he what it. But no, we're saying Kate's but you're looking at kids. and Randall's black. Yeah, but you're looking at kids and you're like, you don't get it. Like oh, why I got hard on it. That's why it was so powerful. Oh, we got it. Yeah, but other people, even no, now, they skip it. I still was like, how come they didn't get along all those years? Right. And then you think about he's it, a Jack Kevin, never him. made it to a football game. Nope. He finally I mean, has to Every once in a while, but yeah, but things now, always come up. Yes. Randall's got a super-duper college and, looking at and him. Now all of a sudden, and he had to settle for Pennsylvania Tech or whatever it was. Well, actually, yeah. Well, he had other schools looking, so that's why the game was supposed to be so at, big. At what? At first. But, yep. but he counted his chickens before they hatched. Yes. You can't do that. But I lo- and I loved how they portrayed that. It was real. Yeah. Like, yeah. I could see the kids I went to school with who played football, who I know got scholarships. Right. Be like, I'm not going to the University of Rhode Island. No. What the hell? I'm going I'm to go the they going to pay exactly. for. Exactly. But I, but that's how real it was. I can mm. see it. I can imagine. And it. mixed with him being uh, caught off guard, learning that his father wasn't the hero uh, he thought he was. Yeah, alcohol problem. Oh my! Listen, all right. So 
Let's just say, <laughs> See how bad I mean? did we need that? So he was such a cocky little jerk. Oh my god! I loved every second of it. He um, was so they, good. The, the, the kid who plays it gave the middle Kevin. Yeah, yeah, it gave yeah. him something to do because he, he's just we, walking by, ignoring him like people yeah. crying. And I'm like, <laughs> I need something else. But it gave him so much more substance finally. Yes. And then to see, first off, he was so rude to his dad. Milo, Jack, you are a good dad. I was going to say, even the black dads that don't stick around would have smacked the hell out of that boy. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ridiculous. The mom would have. Exactly. Yeah, the mom definitely would have came across one side and I think she other. wanted to bake him cookies. I think, no, I think you know what it was? I think she wanted to be the mean one. Yeah. But me, uh, Jack was just so mean for the both of them. Yeah, he was she ready. couldn't be attacked. Oh, he was like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> and a black son is going to go to the school that I can't afford. Hope he gets smart enough to get the, <laughs> the free scholarship. <laughs> got you being a bozo and I got the fat daughter. Let's do this. <laughs> But the oh, scene the shame. was so powerful in the ignorance of oh. who he's just... He literally just wants someone to say, it's all about you, Kevin. Right. But he can't get it. And when he finally thinks he's getting it... Because uh, ironically, as the firstborn, he's the middle. It, it, in yes. a weird sense. And he's the Stephanie. Yeah. So true. So true. And the thing that it's killed really me about weird. the thing, too, is this. That that scene. So that, that really related oh, to me. So good. Number one, number one, you're number one. Yes. The pressure, unintentionally, that parents put on you Woo! when they give you these small nicknames. It, it's not supposed to mean you're more than that nickname. Here comes more guilt, parents. And they can't escape it. Listen, you know what? You know what hurt me? <laughs> because I'm a parent. Right. So right. I look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh. It shows like this that go, you know what? Stay a non-parent. Yeah. I'm going to screw somebody <laughs> well, to up. To me, it's just like, because it's like, I'm like, wow. I remember when I, you know, call my son like fat kid or hey, fatty or whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever cute little nickname because he was all bubbly and right. chunky. And sometimes he'll make these comments where he's like, oh, just exercising. Boy, you are eight years old. Oh, wow. Exercising for, I'm sorry, oh. you are nine years old. What you exercise for? Go sit down. What's your scrawny behind? Oh, now you go. Oh, <laughs> there you go. He's like, oh, it worked. So, yeah. <laughs> but I know this. It's little things like that. Yes, because they take it in at a certain period. The reception is you are going to screw up the kids. Yeah. Just it's let, it, let it go. <laughs> what will happen is, at first, we won't blame you. Yes. Then we go through a stage where we blame you. Then we get old and have our own. We go, oh, I don't blame you. So it's going to come full circle. Yeah, it's going to be good. But you know, don't don't how, panic. How great of that episode <laughs> all was! All three kids are fine. He's a millionaire. Yep. Randall's a millionaire. Kate's a millionaire. They all millionaires. Okay, and she's got and she got a husband, a good guy. Yep. You know, her fear was fat, big, can't do nothing. Got a great husband. Who's not just like, I tolerate you. Yeah. Like, I freaking Genuinely love you. I love you. I yeah. want to have sex with you all the time. He's so nervous. He I didn't even tell his parents about Thank you. <laughs> he <laughs> wants this. Panic attack is coming. Come on. Hold on a second. <laughs> he has arrhythmia, so he can't dance. But he still has his heart and passion for this girl. Yeah. So they're all good. They have their issues. Ex that, but your parents are not going to be perfect because their parents weren't perfect. Yes. And that, oh, oh. Listen, let me just tell you so. All right, guys, you guys, this is no secret. So good. I am not a fan of Justin Hartley because no. he's yet to retweet anything or even favor the tweet. Don't even retweet me. Just favor the tweet. He yet to do it, but that's fine. You know Tell why? Him. He's treating Twitter uh, the way middle Kevin, uh, the middle kid Kevin, the, yeah. the flashback teenager, uh, treated the guy, the coach. The coach. Like, I, I don't talk to you. So yeah. tweet, tweeters at them and they tweet. They, they come to our school. Tweet my school. Retweet and like my school. He's like, your school? Yeah. I want to go to the Harvard uh, tweet. Over and that's there. exactly what it is. So, so he had, that's where the, he didn't have to act during his, these scenes. <laughs> <laughs> the director said, be yourself and go. <laughs> but so sorry. You know, wasn't that a fan because he won't t he won't he won't retweet? Just maybe the tweet. And you're on Twitter. Even Mandy Moore has favorited the tweet. Thank you. E. G. Mike. And she's even busier than Justin. She has more projects that she's Disney doing. Disney got her busy crazy Thank with Rapunzel. You. That's what I'm saying. And she's doing this. And she's a mom. And so, which means she's got to watch a set for someone touching kids. So she's got a work come out she's for her. working hard. Every time she's sweet she's not looking at a kid. <laughs> so she's taking the sacrifice for the fans, people. So Justin, take a lesson from that. Go ahead. But he, first off, let's just talk about going back home. 
right? That's always a big issue. Oh my god, that's always something to tackle. Because you could really never go when home you left again. home. Yeah, it's never the same. Yeah. There's parts that kind of, but it's but it's like you I feel like you out yeah, in my okay. home city, and even I don't yeah. always go home. No, to my old high school. Right, and if you look at doesn't look, everything looks smaller. Yeah, everything looks like you've missed out on something, but you didn't. It's just a weird, it's a weird emotional feeling. It, so for him to come home uh, for this award, oh my god! For in what? the midst of his break, what, what, what was that? A high or a? It's not a buzz. What? Well, he, what, he, he didn't have it was a high, pill. but it, it was a numb. So he, yeah, he was yeah. trying to numb himself more than anything else. That's right, yeah. Because so. the addiction didn't come because he, he enjoys the feeling. Right. The addiction came for him because it got him from, from feeling. Right. And it, it goes beyond the knee. Yes. Which is always funny to me. Like, I don't... He, his portrayal of... I still, like I said, I still don't like him. His character or him right now. But oh, I, see, like I like his more, this, like I like He gave me so much more depth. And he gave uh, me so much more... Ability, like it's depth. Here's the depth. Like, Listen, you, you hurt your the knee. The writers, you, you and, it's, oh. and it's in pain. So no, no, I'm talking about the addiction part. Yeah, here's here's unless, your addiction. Unless you've been in a, an here's addict, your addiction. how do you play an addict so well? Because he's an addict. Kevin, <laughs> <laughs> he's an addict to selfies or something. I don't know. He's an addict to you know getting a new wife. So <laughs> well, his wife is very funny on Twitter. Yes, and she always. But his, his first wife was great. And they should have stayed together. I didn't know he had another wife. Mm-hmm. Okay. And a kid. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In yes. real life? In real life. Okay. I'm irritated with them. But it's okay. I, I'm going to learn. No, you know what? No, it's not okay. Sorry. Okay. But, yeah. I didn't know that. Here's his addiction with the pills. You hurt your knee. You took the pill. You are hurting. They said, take this surgery. You won't hurt no more. No, I don't want a surgery. I want to take care. Keep keeping. I'm gonna keep taking the pills instead. So you brought it on yourself. Oh yeah. Then you had sex so hard your necklace flew off, and then you flew out in a tizzy. Didn't even eat the food that she was making for you. Jerk move. That he I don't did, care how high you were. He deserved. The what? thing is, he wasn't high because he was trying to get pills. Well, even he worse. He was happy. He found the script, so right. he can write it. My thing but is smart enough to only take one, so she wouldn't know it was missing. Yes, but not true. smart enough to figure out a way to leave. You haven't done this before, the old Kevin. Stop. Thank you. Thank you, you take the woman's food. You said, "Oh, this is pretty good." You know, I got to get going now. And and she would have been just do it the next day. She had her thing. She would have been fine. So I, I was mad at her in her episode when she walked out with him. When she saw him drinking, I thought, "Oh, she's a doctor. She sees she the really signs. Nope. She's going to go have this moment." And she touches the leg and says, I, "I'd see more if you were naked." Just don't do not do that. And at first, I'm so naive. When she said that, I thought, oh, she is connected. She said, I'll see your heart. I'll see your whole life. And then when he said that to her, I was like, oh, oh, she, she's just horny. She's just so I didn't yeah. like that at all. But, ugh. but it was still high school for her. This is the dream. The, the, the high school guy yeah. she never got finally came right. home. Finally like, home. And he's single again. And he's settled for me because I have prescription pads. <laughs> Yes. Wow. I feel like a special woman. And that's the thing. I will say, the worst part is, all this Hollywood stuff, woman power, this lady in Hollywood's not getting no more scripts. <laughs> she just took woman movies back 50 years. But my thing with her a was, doctor, she a doesn't volunteer, even know about the one night the script. That's, it's even worse. So she was just mad because her heart was he broken. Was even she didn't care. She, he was drinking all night. Yes. So she knew he was impaired and had fine with the one night stand drunk to take advantage of the man. It happens on our side too. And so as, as her point, that's what she did. Well, that's no, a bad woman. No, that, that's, how bad. We, that, that's what she did to us. Like right. When you look at it, yeah. that's what she did. She thought, oh, here's my moment. Because guess what? But he's drunk. If, the thing is, that's what Bill that's Cosby how she, Here's my moment. She's clearly passed out, except to me. But the reason why I said, hey, here's my moment. She's dumb, and mm-hmm. you can tell she was emotionally invested. Right. Because if she wasn't, him leaving wouldn't have been a big deal. Oh, it, it bruised her ego. She was cooking a meal. How she dare you leave the meals and something else? She wasn't cooking. Oh, uh, well, even that. You know what I'm saying? And how they don't have food at your house, woman? You a doctor? She ain't got no kids. <laughs> Come on now, you put something in the house. What you eating? She don't look thin in herself. She has more than that in the fridge. Take out. She don't want to say I got nine packs of McDonald's up in here. Oh, this is a Tivo <laughs> Mike show.
What if I told you the Bible is not a book of fairy tale stories and moral analogies? It is the miraculously preserved record of God's involvement in man's reality. Through it, God shares with us His deep love for humanity, regardless of our mistakes, sins, and insanity. You see, it's not just a book of do's and don'ts for you and I, or a lesson in ethics so I can be a good person before I die. It is the message from God that this world has sold me a lie. But Jesus came to share the truth, show the way, and give eternal life. Yes, the Bible reveals the sin nature within every man, yet its purpose is not to say that you're worthless, but a treasure designed by God's very hand. When God says that He loves you, He means right where you stand. It's His immeasurable love for you that orchestrated this master plan. From the very beginning, loving you has been a speciality. He chose your eye color, body type, and personality. He made you unique and gave you a nationality. Though you may feel unimportant, you're His masterpiece in actuality. Fast forward to Jesus, hanging by three nails on a tree, gasping for air. He was barely able to breathe. He cried out, Father, forgive them. He was praying for you. And for me, this Jesus pleading with God to make us blind men see. I mean, this was God's only Son separated from His Father's presence, forsaken and disconnected so that I could be spared my sentence and adopted into sonship through the simple act of repentance. Because of Jesus, not by merit, I've received this acceptance. Did I mention this good news is not for me only, but for all of God's creation? that through His love He sent His Son to bring you into salvation. He accepted every beating while knowing many would reject this reconciliation. But to Jesus, you were worth every moment of His torture in order to secure your emancipation. Oh, and three days after Jesus had died, by the power of God, He was brought back to life. And as He walked out from the tomb, Mary looked at Him with her own eyes and ran back to the disciples to share Jesus is alive. Notice God entrusted a woman to be the first person to tell the guy. Well, the disciples laughed and thought, this woman has lost her mind. Even the disciples still had doubts after all this time. But shortly after, Jesus appeared to them all and said this line, Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age as he ascended on high. He said these words to remind us he didn't just leave us all alone, to sit somewhere far away from us on his heavenly throne. You know, to be in touch with my God, you don't need some spiritual telephone. You simply have faith in Jesus' name and He'll make your body His home. You see, God's love has nothing to do with my good behavior and everything to do with His unconditional loving nature. The Bible says we're like lost sheep hunted by wolves in a pasture and that Jesus is the Lamb of God ripped apart in order to save me from disaster. And like all good shepherds, God gave His life for His sheep. He came humble and meek, fresh meat for them to sink in their teeth. I made weak. I cannot hide what is happening to my heart underneath. Jesus is bringing a life to the dead man inside of me, and all I have to do is breathe. And from this breath, God breathes life into you by the words that I speak. But don't be confused. My words have no power and my talk is cheap. If this was all dependent on my ability, I would put you to sleep. It's the one named Jesus whose talent far exceeds any earthly MC. Whose kingdom is not one of word, but of power. Who's ready and willing to set you free from bondage at this very hour. Don't wait another second. The fruit this world offers you will always turn sour. It will never fill that emptiness you feel when you question life alone in the shower. I'm here to warn you that this world will leave you destitute and naked. It's had you deceived by a 2D image on a screen since temptation first said, Hey kid, and now you're stuck in a vicious cycle of recreational sex and getting wasted. Like, wait, I thought I'd be happy saying YOLO and doing everything Drake did. Or maybe you fell for religion and believed grace is based on good behavior, thinking if I go to church, memorize every verse, then I'll be good enough for my Savior. Forgetting grace is a gift and there are things more important to your Maker, like loving the sick, poor and forgotten, the widow, fatherless and the stranger. See, if I have not love, it's just self-righteous moralism. And if I'm living this way, I'm in direct opposition to the God who gave His Son for all, who made loving you His primary mission. This is why I believe in Jesus. Because Jesus is greater than religion.
<laughs> Welcome back to the Steve <laughs> Mike Show on Block Talk Radio. Be sure to subscribe to us on Apple iTunes Podcasting System and Platform for free. That's right. <laughs> and Google Play if you have a Samsung that hasn't yet caught fire. Not like caught fire, like caught, it's the sales, it's the new shebang, but like caught actual fire. I can't. <laughs> I keep coming at Samsung because Samsung keeps coming at me. Oh, yeah? I saw this latest commercial of all the updates on Apple phones and the person had a Samsung and the Apple fell into a river and they had to put it in rice <laughs> and the dude didn't. And then one was bigger and then one charged wirelessly with his ear and then ours didn't. Listen, it ain't about being first. <laughs> it's about being best. And you ain't never, not one time, not ever, not anywhere heard Apple iPhone catching fire except for sales. <laughs> so I have to say my piece. Okay. So back to this is us. But yeah, I'm just saying they picked the fight with the wrong brother. But you know, so we're going to talk about, oh, the, the scene when he comes back with the necklace. Got yeah, well, before the necklace, the before. football scene. Oh, is that before the necklace? Yes, because he's on the field. And because that's oh, before actually, he went home with the doctor. Wait, hold on. So when did he do the scene? See, now I'm so confused. So he did the, the play by play. Before, Before the he sat with the lady? Well, no, after he sat with her. But after, remember, he went up on stage, he gave, he started to give a speech, and then he realized he didn't deserve the speech. Like, oh, the that's honor. when he sees his dad. So he gave everybody else the credit. Right. And then when clapped, and he just looked at them like, yeah, like, like you didn't you. listen to me? <laughs> right, you didn't hear what I said? Like, I know I'm pretty, but damn, I was talking. That was a look ah, he gave them. Ah, ah, and then he's sitting ah. on the football field. Oh, and he's just right. reminiscing on life, but then he realizes... This is my MO. Like, this is what I do. I, I, I get to these scene. places of being built up, and they're building me up, these people. Right. And then I'm yelling at them for doing it. Yes. And then it's and a he cycle. reflected, and then he gave exact. And, and then but he you know gave what's that brilliant? play by play on his life. Like, the play by play. Oh, this will go down. It goes for it. Every season has an episode. Yes. Where it, uh, or has a scene. A scene, yes. That defines that season. This is going to be the last year that episode or that scene to me was the uh, scene it. with the doctor telling to him no. that you'd lost your son yeah. or whatever. Uh, and here's what you're going to do. Here's my story. To me, that just that, cause that, took away right. the whole it took season. It did. This season. It's this season right here. <laughs> the season that's current only right. <laughs> that's on Tuesday. <laughs> Is the play by play? You remember it more? Say the play by play. It's just the way he did it. Like he went through. He went through his actual game. And he's like, oh, and, and, and Pearson's got the ball. But then all of a sudden, he takes it from the play of the game. Mm. Then he gets knocked down. Is he going to get back up? Mm. He gets back up, but the knee's broken, and the dad is gone. Mm. And then he's down again. And it, it was just like... And I, when he said he got knocked down by life with the knee, his whole career is over. Will he get back up? He will. He will. He'll get on to do another career, and he'll be great at that. Oh, no. First it was his father died. Yes. He lost his knee. He lost the game. His he father's dead. Oh. oh, he's out, guys. He's, there's no comeback from this. I lost my dad. He Did lost he his everything. Back? And what, what goes on? He comes and gets a career. What? He becomes number one. What? He gets his uh, million, millionaire status. He's doing it. Oh, my God. And what does he do? Oh, he blows that. Yes. He destroys it. Goes down. Da, 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 da. Then he goes, oh, there he goes. He's going back to get the woman. Will she take him back? Oh, she, she does. does. He scores. Yes. And what does he do? Oh, oh no. I see. He turns left when he's done done right. Oh, no. He messed that up. And that I I lost it. Yes. Because I, too, am a cynical person. Yep. And that's how I describe my own life when I do my own replay. Uh, play. I thought I was the only one to do play by plays. <laughs> only I don't have a crew behind me paying me forty five thousand a week to do it. Yeah, and it's not a character. <laughs> Sad. Um. So, but there's, that's how life is. Yeah. You know, things. And he kept going. And then by the time he's done with that game, he didn't fully grasp the full message. Yes. Of what that meant. He of all the play by play, he didn't say how. Even he kept saying, I messed up. 
he never was connecting why he was messing up. Yes. And I also related on another level because he's pretty in, 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 the, in the Hollywood world yeah. where, you know, two things you got to deal with Hollywood. You got to cover up your kitty cats because they're, gonna, they're after that. And th- you have to watch the prejudice of pretty men. Yes. And pretty men don't get taken seriously ever, no matter what they yeah. are. They could cure cancer. They would say, oh, it was probably the disease saw their smile and flew back or something. Like, they're never going to get credit for whatever. For being smart, yeah. The people look at the pretty, you know. And so what happens is I thought part of that was autobiographical. And I kind of thought of him. I thought of Rob Lowe. Yeah. I thought of those people that... It's a different prejudice. It's a total luxury problem. It is. You know, but problem. You know, because then it sets your character. If every time you're with people, they don't hold you accountable, they would, the way they did if you were average looking or ugly, treat me like I'm ugly. Yeah. They have the best characters. Oh, yeah. They, 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 you could get away with nothing. The prettier you are... And it, it culminated when he saw his father at the, the war, yes. when he started to, to talk and say, but I don't deserve it, and the clap, he was like, okay, so, yes, yeah, so even though I've just said, I'm a loser, I said, all that, you, like you said, I heard nothing, you heard, you, you heard none of that, yeah. you saw my celebrity, I said, oh, that's the Manny, so we clap, whatever he says, we say, yay, we clap, oh, he sexually harassed somebody, we clap. He has bad B.O. He didn't shower. Well, let's clap. Yes. You know, like a red right. hair no hair turn. Yeah. And so because he didn't step in himself to give himself the moral perpetude and strike, he's now caught in this cycle. Yes. Which was so devastating to him. Yes. And he doesn't realize it. And then, then now we got to talk about then it. Then the necklace. So let's just say, first off, that hurt me in the worst way. And how hard are you having sex that your well, necklace that you've always had on all the time because is now off? He let some high school girl go nuts on him because she never got out of that moment she never had in high school ripping people's clothes off. Girl, you grown. Grow up. Give him time to unbutton. But my thing is... Remember when he said it? When he asked, well, you, you tore my shirt. Like, God, I'm still so confused. What? Yes. Yes, exactly. But he said it just like that. Like, yeah. And then... And then the reality, and that's what it was. So the, the, the show let me down for like 10 seconds. Uh-oh. Because I wanted somebody in the street to just go up to him and be like, hey, you okay? Like, somebody hug him. And like, that was the point. You left him there. And, and, and then he was like, it's not even about that. Right. I, I, I lost it. Oh. I, I was like, cried so too? mad at the show right now because I hadn't cried since you since cried. William died. <gasps> And I was like, it's a revelation, guy. No one helped him, you know. Cause, no cause, you know why? Because I always got the firstborn conversation. The, right. You take care of everybody else. And then when I needed someone to take care of me, but he never took care of anyone else either. That, and that's, that, that, well, that's the difference. Yeah, that is the difference. He didn't take for me. It was but like no one. The doctor missed it. The people at work missed yes. it. Yes. The the Kate maid missed, missed, missed it. it. Kate missed it. She kind of knew something. Come on. If you love TV, $405 and Libby. If you love Jesus, Hallelujah. we're going to love TiVo Mike. The TiVo Mike Show is a daily internet radio show that features the best of popular culture with a Christian point of view. TiVo Mike teaches you about Jesus and popular TV shows with the entertainment guru, Mike Warner. From The Walking Dead to The Big Bang Theory, you'll experience entertainment that fills your spirit. The TiVo Mike Show airs weekdays at 2 p.m. Eastern on Blog Talk Radio. Or subscribe on iTunes or Google Play. Learn more at TiVoMike.com. That's TiVoMike.com. When the night is closing in And your mind is racing I remember everything you said to me Now I can let it go. 
Even that song was heavy. Right? Let me just no, tell we you. Up. We didn't make a joke. So about. Tuesday is a great night for me. I'm lost after this week, though, because every time I watch that heaviness and greatness of This Is Us, and right I get to watch Thanksgiving. This is not right people. I know. That's a, can you imagine what's going to happen next week? I lost the, the baby. Now it's our turkey. Thank you. That's exactly how I feel. And but, this is the Thanksgiving episode. Yeah. All right. It, and Christmas. Because they got to put two together. Yeah. So I wonder if they're going to do that. Are they I don't know. We'll see, I think Christmas is going to be Randall. Okay, so they'll Because we're going to get Randall's story next, the following week. For Christmas. Yeah. Oh, I see. oh, there's two more weeks. That's right. Okay. Yeah, because we're going to get, we're getting her, we're getting Kate this week. And then Randall's back. Oh, tonight. Back. And then we're getting Randall next week. Okay. That's right. But, wow. let me tell you. I have an escape. I'd watch This Is Us and I'd be sad or hurting. <laughs> then i watch the sick, twisted world of... Um, oh, cult. cult. American Horror Story cult. And... And that had its finale last week. Oh, so now I don't know what I'm going to watch when I'm we, sad after Kate. We hate it when a cult ends. <sighs> yes, we do. We do. Is that me? I'm just like, because my thing was like, okay, I can watch this and get sad, and then watch the sick, twisted world of cult and be okay again, because it balances everything. It takes away from the sad, because like, oh my oh. God, these people are crazy. Oh, I see. And now I have oh, nothing. As I say, cray cray. I have nothing to bring me back from that. I'm going to watch Kate. <laughs> right. And, and I'm going to be like, and part of me is mad. At the writers and stuff, because I'm getting the same writer vibe from Walking Dead people when they did that interview after they Not killed um, the Popeye no. guy. They were outside I can't and they do said, it. "We have to bring the audience to their knees." This show was we written. Had to, this show was written. Three seasons was already written before one was even seen. even worse. So, so he not planned like that to at drag all. us down. <laughs> he said we're gonna take away her baby. No, he then then told us gonna die from a rhythm in the car when he hits the thing too hard. Cut and it. Then out. Randall is gonna get <laughs> shot by a police officer and die. And now. Kelly Watson, whatever, has to raise these girls. The girl who they brought in becomes an axe killer and kills the other daughters during the night shift. Like, it's going to really be dark. It's not And then Jack shows up and says, psych, I'm not dead. I just didn't want to raise a black man anymore. It's not going to be that dark at all. It's going to be so sad. I can't even do it. Stop watching. All these jokes (laughs) just stop from crying. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to cry. Guys, this is us. That's that's all I can say. This is us. Like, just... Learn the lessons from them, please, and live the blessed life. That's right. But there's really only one way to really live the blessed life, and that's to walk daily, not Tuesday, with the creator of life, Christ Jesus. I love you, saints. Be well. And that's right, saints. As always, you you heard it here first. Subscribe on iTunes and Google Play, and be sure to rate us. Also, write us if you like us. If you don't, Never mind. Woo! Until next time, Saints, I'm EG Mike 84 on Twitter. He's TiVo Mike on Instagram. And our show, the TiVo Mike Show, is on Facebook. Follow us. Favorite us. Retweet us. See you tomorrow. Hi, Saints. It's Mike Warner, associate producer and entertainment guru of the TiVo Mike Show. And this half hour of our show is over. Feel free to join our 135 subscribers and check out our TiVo Mike YouTube channel where we have over 127,000 total views of show clips, full episodes, TiVo Mike soapbox, and more, all free, anytime, anywhere.